Hello. Hello, can you hear me, class? Class, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, teacher. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Hey, Jose Wilfredo, how did you do that avatar? Oh, I'm sorry. I was taking a minute. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a new series that the Zoom uh, app has, maybe with the new update. Oh, okay. Could... Hey, that's cool. But yeah, it's really nice. But you could even, uh, I don't know if you see the three dots above of your screen or mm -hmm. even in your pic. In your video? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see them. Okay, you make a click right there. And after that, uh, you will get a one drop down menu and set it choose avatar. Oh, okay, I will play with that later. That's cool. Did, <laughs> yeah. did, did you see the app that some students invented in the United States when it was the COVID? So what happened was like they take a pic, you take a picture, a selfie, uh -huh. and then the selfie, I think it moves for 15 seconds uh -huh. and then it starts moving again. So it, it seems that you're active. And, and it's really nice for this also, because let me, let me show you. If I close my eyes, the avatar close the eyes. If I up my a blushes. If I lift. Yeah, if I left my eyelashes, uh, yep, hey, that's eyelashes. Cool. also the avatar move as well. <laughs> if I open the mount, the avatar open the mount as well. If I move to the right, if I move to the left, the avatar follow you. Can you take out your tongue? No. <laughs> hey, but it opens the mouth. <laughs> that's oh, cool. just open the mouth. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, it's nice. No, but that, that app I was telling you about is a selfie that moves. It's your real uh -huh. picture. No, it's so, better than this yeah, one. It, it was to trick the teachers that you were online. So maybe you were sleeping. And then they, <laughs> so, so like, imagine this is how it looked. Like, look at me. Uh -huh. So it moved. You, you, your uh -huh. selfie moved. Uh -huh. And that was so cool. But then everybody started using it. Yeah, that's right. For I I use Tim. No, yeah, Tim's for my work mm -hmm. for my job. I use Tim to communicate with the other uh, coworkers, and we have a setting similar to this. You can uh, create your own avatar. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. You know, it's in, really funny. In my previous class, I had a. Um... He was, he works, he worked in IT and I forgot in which call center, uh -huh. but he was an engineer of systems, systems engineer. Uh -huh. And he was very heavy into, into software. And one time he, sh he, he showed me a video on YouTube. He said, look at this video. It was maybe five minutes. So look at it. And I looked at the video and it was a normal conversation. It was a normal reunion. It was the lady who was the host. And then she said, she said like, hi, I'm Samantha. I will be your host. So tell me a little bit about yourself. He said, hi, I'm Jose. I am from El Salvador. Oh, that's good. El Salvador. Tell me about it. So when I, and, and then he told me, did you see the video? I said, yes. Do you know that the host, Samantha, is artificial intelligence? And I was, what? Uh -huh. My yes. goodness. And that that's what um you know, but he told me he knew that because he works in that and he, you know he likes to be updated in 
in web pages and, and links with other software. And he tells me that that's a new software that they're using now as a test. And I lost the link. I lost the link, but I forgot what company it is. That they're, it, That's crazy, man. I was shocked. I went back and I watched the video again. And I was looking at Samantha. And she tricked me. Yeah, uh, to be honest, uh, I believe that maybe we will disappear with in, with the intelligent, art, artificial intelligence. Yes, that's what I think too. Yeah. You know it's what? Much. What I think about it would be. I don't know. I I don't know if I am in favor or not of artificial intelligence because that's going to finish humanity. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you notice, it is starting a little. Like, for example, in the United States, when you go to a supermarket, there are no more cashiers now. You do it all yourself, and the computer does it. You scan your own products. Mm -hmm. But what I'm really afraid of with artificial intelligence, there's going to be an imbecile who's going to want to clone Hitler and bring him back to life. Or, you know, bad people. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's going to uh, clone or have the DNA of Hitler, similar like they did with um, with Superman. Remember Superman, that the original Superman from the 80s, that they made him from one hair. I think they had a hair of Superman, and from them, they made the 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 other, the villains. They made like, what, well, Jurassic Park. They made the dinosaurs from the fossils. You know, in the hair is the DNA. Where? The in the hair is the DNA. Yes. So, I I don't uh -huh. know if you watched if you watched Superman the original one in the eighties. Yep. Yeah, remember they took one yeah, of his so. hair and then from there they made the other ones. Uh -huh. So now with artificial intelligence, it's scary because I don't know. I I don't think it's. <laughs> it's a good idea. I think we should worry about natural intelligence. Can you yeah, imagine? And I was just saying, can you imagine somebody cloning Sanchez Seren? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> just dumb. I I saw a meme, un meme, a meme. Huh? I think it was two days ago, <laughs> and Sanchez Seren say. Hey, es, me acabo de dar cuenta que estoy en Nicaragua, no en la colonia Nicaragua. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> Just talking nonsense is going to happen. Yes, it's true. It's scary. Yeah. That's very scary. Okay, hold on. Let's see. So what do you guys think about TOEFL so far? Hello? What do you guys think about TOEFL? Class, uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Hello, can you it hear could me? Be a, it could be a, an exam that measures your knowledge about English. No, no not, not only. It's not that it could be, it will be. <laughs> yeah. And, and, no, and not basic English. Yes. Remember, um, I will repeat it again. Remember, I told you at the beginning of the class, I really hate TOEFL. And it's not, it's not, that, here. I, it's not that I hate <laughs> it because of this, because I think it's very complicated. It's very demanding because honestly, honestly, have you ever heard people speak like the readings in your everyday life? No, in no, no. Nobody really speaks like that. So what I'm saying is, it's not your fault. It's not English Corporativo's fault. It's the fault of whoever invented TOEFL. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. And as teachers, we always say, hey, man. Make it different. Because then what, what's bad about it is that many people will get frustrated. 
It's like, oh man, I don't understand anything. Forget it. I give up. You know, I don't understand this. Nobody understands. I mean, yesterday we did readings about fossils, uh, about pollution, about we did a lot of vocabulary that you never heard of. But this is just to give you an idea. That's how the exams are going to be in TOEFL. In TOEFL. So if, when you pass it, oh man, you're good for three years. Don't take it again. I mean, even native English speakers don't pass TOEFL sometimes. I wonder what was the person that invented TOEFL was thinking? <laughs> yes, I think, yeah, you know, I. I don't know. I think this person was very, very technical. This person, it's, I don't know, because the embassy wants TOEFL just to prove that you can speak English. For me, there are easier ways to prove that you speak English. First, talking in an interview, talk to me. But the only way to them that you can prove that you speak English is passing the TOEFL. And like I said, even native speakers, even teachers that are native speakers, some don't pass it because it's maybe because it's not grammatically, it's not so complicated. It's, it's the, the, the topics. But I hope someday it changes. So yesterday we read about panspermia. Uh, hold on, let me share my screen. Today I learned something new. Today I learned something new. Do you want to hear what I learned today? It's interesting. Yes. What did you learn? Okay, look at me and please don't be offended. I will explain. Okay? Have you ever seen people do this? Many a, times. The middle finger. Yes. Many times, right? Yep. It's offensive. It's universal, I think. Yes. Do yeah. you know do you know why why the middle finger? Why not the index? Why not the thumb? Mm -hmm. No. It was because Any idea. yeah, listen to this. It's pretty cool. It's interesting. There was a war, like always, in medieval, medieval. France and England, they were in a war. So the king of France told his army that every soldier they catch from England to cut cut off their middle finger. And the reason is, it was, it was a good reason, actually. It was smart because when you do archery, tiro largo, you need this finger. This is like the balance finger. Bah. Yes? So then the king mm -hmm. of the king of France said, "Hey, well, if you cut their fingers, we're going to win because if they escape or they survive, they can't they can't shoot anymore." But the problem was that England beat by a very big advantage, Taliyada, to France. Mm -hmm. And when England discovered what the king wanted to do, or I think, I I don't remember if they caught the king and they were going to kill him. So all the Englishmen did that to the French, to the king. They showed him the finger. Like, toma. <laughs> so that's where the middle finger expression comes from. So uh, the the king of France was not expecting that England was going to win. Yeah, interesting. I was, oh, that's why. Yeah. 
interesting information. Maybe someone else do that sign up, but we don't know what what the real means is. Yes, it's like uh, I I told my ex class. Do you know the meaning the meaning of fuck? You know? Oh, and excuse me, class. Once again, please don't get offended. I will explain why. You heard many people say "fuck you," right? I know, Dennis. I think I told the class last time. You know, you heard people say "fuck you" or "fuck." I think even in Spanish, people say "fuck." And actually, that that came from the king that says fornication under consentment of king. So what happened was, imagine, imagine, okay? Imagine Adelina, ha, she's married and her husband goes to battle. But her husband never returns. Technically, Adelina is still married. But her husband didn't return. So Adelina, she doesn't know what happened to her husband. Did he, did he die? Did he escape? Is he a prisoner? What happened? And remember, before women were in the women were very dependent to the man. So now Adelina, it's a woman. She can't work because she's a woman, and she has no husband. So eventually. Adelina has to get married again. But she's married. So what can she do? That's fornication. So she has to go ask permission to the king. King Adelina, my husband went to war two years ago. He never returned. I don't know if he's dead. I don't know if he's a prisoner. I don't know if he escaped. What do I do? I want to continue with my life. I have another partner. And the king says, okay. So he gave her like a certificate, F -U -C -K, fornication under consentment of king. So that technically was not a bad word. Now it's a verb. <laughs> it's a verb, but really it was not a bad word. Teacher. Yes. What happened if Adelina husband returned? You know what? That's a good question. I always I I don't know. That's a very good question. But you know the problem. You know I think I saw a movie about that. What movie was that? That the husband did return many many years later, and he found his wife with an. You know she started a family. Etc. Etc. And yeah, that was sad. I guess it was the one with Tom Cruise that he was on an island. He was like a bike flying with a UPS, something like that. I don't remember the name of that movie. Really? No, no. but there was more about a movie about, like, I think it was something like Dances with Wolves. It wasn't that movie, though. But it was mm -hmm. about that time. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you saw Dracula. Did you see the movie Dracula from Bram Stoker? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I know you have, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's Dracula, man. I, I mean, oh, man. But remember Dracula? He was a fighter for for the church and he went to fight because that that's how he became Dracula because he went to fight but he really really loved his wife and when he returned he saw that his wife was killed and raped and he got angry with God because he said I fight many wars for you and this is how you pay me and that's when he became evil and that's really you have not seen Dracula Man, it's a whole it's an awesome movie with Winona Ryder. A Beautiful. Te a terrible Keanu Reeves. <laughs> terrible in that movie. 
My favorite part, Dennis, is when he sees her. He says, I have traveled many oceans and many years to see you. Oh, man. Now, I, I have to watch Dracula this weekend now. <laughs> really good movie. Very good. All right. So, so back to this. We, we spoke about the meteorite found in Antarctica. And doo -doo -doo. We, we, we did about OTAC. Okay, we're going to do this reading now. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, first of all, we're going to talk about the Neolithic period. Do you know what that is? No. According no to oh. according to this, it's, it's around the time of stones. Some of years ago. Yes, it was 4,300 B.C. So, 6,000 years ago. Okay, so, let me see who, who could read today, who could read. Rodrigo Antonio, can you read? Sunday, you will surprise me, Rodrigo Antonio Melendez. Someday I will meet you. All right. Um, the camera people, I see. Rafael Antonio, can you please read this? Um, listen, okay. let, let me recommend you something also. I've noticed this with many people when they're reading. If you cannot pronounce a word, it's okay. Stop, look at it, and say it by syllables. Like, I prefer you to do this. And then in the neo, neo, Lithic period, instead of saying this, in the Neolithic period, uh, starting 10,000 years ago, you know, don't just read it. Don't just say it to say. Try to understand the word. Try to pronounce the word. And if you can't, say it by syllables. Okay? Go ahead. In the Neolithic period, starting around 10,000 years ago, perhaps the most important economic revolution the human history occurred, the commencement of agriculture and the domestication of animal for human consumption. From this point in time, people could start to rely on a more consistent and much increased food supply as a corollary Burnary. of this. Considerable larger population could be supported, and people could settle in one place without the need to migrate in search of food supplies. I have a question. I have a question. Do you know what is migrate? It's like move, move, move to place. But what is the difference between migrate and immigrate? No, there I don't too. know. I don't know. Okay, so my grade is in between two directions. Uh, I'm going to give you an example, and maybe with the example, you will understand the difference. What happened to oh. Raf Rafael is from San Miguel, and he migrated to Santa Ana. It's, it's when moving. you go moon in the same country. Yes. My uh, Rafael migrated from San Miguel to Santa Ana, or Rafael immigrated to the United States. 
So it's locally or international? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, you migrated from La Cima 1 to La Cima 2, for example. That's a migration. But immigration really is a different country. Okay. Got it. All right. So I'm sorry, please continue to migrate. Uh, in search equally, of food supplies. Equally important the surplus of crops and animals means that not all the population needed to dedicate their, their time and energy to farming. Some could now learn especially specialized skills, skills. specialized skills such as craft or trade. The building of permanent settlements where skill could be developed uh, brought about the condition necessary for the first growth of towns. But several thousand years elapsed between the beginnings of agriculture and the rise of what we call civilization about 6,000 years ago. Civilization. Repeat, please. Civilization. Civilization. Hey, that's five, that's five, five, um, ¿cómo se llama? Civilization, five. Five syllables. Okay. So, for example, when if you can't pronounce civilization, say it by syllables. Civilization. Five. Say it in four. Civilization. Three. Civil. Civilization, two, civilization, and one, civilization, until you get it. That's how you practice your fluency. So according to paragraph one, what conditions allow people to learn specialized skills? The ability to migrate, the growth of population, the surplus of farm products, or the spread of settlements. I think the the growth of population. Okay. Does anybody think of something different? But you know what, um, Dennis, you said I think is the growth of population. Read the question again. According to the paragraph one, what conditions allow people to learn specialized skills? So growth of population is not a specialized skill. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let's see. That's when the letter C. In my opinion, I think it's C. Yes, but they have enough uh, farm products, they can do another thing. Mm -hmm. Farm products, that means everything from food to farm products. Let's see if that's right. Okay. Yes, equality important, uh, the surplus of products. Anyway, we just read that. Oh, it's the same one. Yes, in this part, equality important. Okay, so why did people migrate before the Neolithic Revolution? Sorry, what was the question? Why did people migrate? So, look at here. It says the question. According to why? paragraph one, why did people migrate before the Neolithic Revolution? 
for food. To search for Why? better for climates? Food. Yeah. I think, you know, I yeah, that's the number one reason, I think. Okay, now, there's a third reading. And who will read this? It's going to be Adelina, can you read number um, this one, please? Okay. Recent evidence seems to... Evidence. Evidence. Evidence, evidence. evidence seems to indicate that while the Neolithic Revolution first took place in the Middle East, in the valleys of the Tigris, Euphrates, 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 mm -hmm. And of the Neil on Nile. of the Neil of the Nile, it occurred independently in other areas of the world. The origin of the revolution are not known in great detail, but it but it is known that the wild races that were the ancestors of Weth and Barley Barley grew natively in the eastern Mediter Mediterranean area. It may be that Mesolithic Middle Eastern Age forages imply supplemented their diet by repine, reaping, reaping, reaping? These, reaping these wild grasses, and later came to understand the advantage of returning some of the grain to the soil as seed. Whatever the case, we know that. At an early date, people living in the Eastern Mediterranean region who lived by hunting, fishing, and gator gatoring began to make sickles with stone teeth set in bone handles. Mm -hmm. Such tools were certainly used for reaping some grass crop, whether cultivated or wild. It's amazing huh? how nature is so by hunting fishing and gathering they begin to make cycles what is cycle sickles actually do you know what that is which one where is it it's almost at the end oh cultivate what are some grass crop oh sickle no i don't know have you, you seen to make cycles? Have you seen some some things that farmers they do this, they get it and and the knife is like a half a moon, and they start boom boom just cutting. <laughs> and it's like like la cuma. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Like ravines, gorges. Here, let's go the easy way. Sun Hill with some seals. Here you go, look. Like us. Do you see the screen? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's a sickle. And imagine they made tools from teeth and bones. You know, another discovery I made, uh, I something I discovered recently is that why China always won the war because do you remember in medieval time the um the British people, the 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 fight, the the armies, they wore um helmets and everything was from metal. That was just in case they, they would shoot them, you know. It was made from steel. Acero. Do you know how the Chinese people protected themselves, the army? Did you see the Chinese que tenían que parecían escamas de pez? Their 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 uniform? Uh -huh. That was made from paper. And it's a crazy story because they realized that the British 
if they made their armor from steel, it's heavy and they can't move very well. So then the Chinese, they did paper. If you look right now, you cannot fold a paper six times. Get a piece of paper and fold it six times. Pero parejas. One, two, three, four. It doesn't matter how big the paper is, you can't fold it. So then the Chinese said, hey, what if we fold the paper? The paper is not heavy. And then the, the more you fold, the harder it was. And it wasn't heavy. Man, those were smart people. Who would imagine, hey, let's use paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, These so. Mm -hmm. People who build those armors. Yeah, because imagine the armors for the poor British, it was steel. They couldn't yeah. move. Maybe it was difficult for them to move and heavy. They move slow. Exactly. So according to paragraph two, sickles found in the Eastern Mediterranean are evidence that the markers of the sickles were skilled craftsmen. Wild grasses were eaten before domestic grasses. The sickles were full, useful for fishing and hunting. And grasses were cut down for food consumption. What do you think it is? I think letter C. Dripping some grass crop. Let's look or at the last paragraph. D. Says, look, whatever the case, we know that the early people living in the Eastern Mediterranean region who lived by hunting, fishing, and gathering began to make sickles with stone teeth set in bone handles. Such tools were certainly used for reaping some grass cores. Letter D. Uh -huh, letter B. The sickles were used enough. Some grass crop, crop, whether cultivated or wild. So let's read the question again. According to paragraph two, sickles found in the eastern Mediterranean are evidence that. Grasses were cut down for food consumptions, maybe. The sickles were useful for fishing and hunting, no. Wild grasses were eaten before domestic grasses. Mm -hmm. A, uh, okay. The markers of these sickles were skilled craftsmen. I am stuck between A and D. Um. Does it say? Does it say why the the grass was cut down? Let's see. It occurred independently in other areas of the world. The origins of revolution were not known in a great detail, but it is known that the wild grasses that were the ancestors of wheat and barley grew natively in the eastern Mediterranean area. It may be Mesolithic, Middle Age stone, forager simplify. Supplements their diet, reaping this wild grasses, and later came to understand the advantage of returning some of the grain to the soil that seed. Mm -hmm. But it's really not talking about the sickles. So oh. definitely, I would say A, maybe. A? Yep. This makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think A. Let's do this one. Number four, it says, according to paragraph four, why was it easy for people to grow food near large rivers? Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Why, let's look, why is it easy to grow food in near near large rivers? Let's do, um, David, Samuel, do you want to read, please? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Also, in the Mesopotamia, the periodic flows of great rivers, such as the Nile and the Tigris Empress, not only supply the water for the fields, but also brought down fresh soil fresh in the soil. Fertile, mm -hmm. fertile new sediments. 
This sediment was deposited on flood plains around such rivers, thus annually restoring the fruitfulness of the land. This regular flooding and sediment deposit allowed these early farmers to continue cultivating the same fields repeatedly for generations without exhausting the fertility of the soil. And crop surpluses were therefore available to allow increase in population and growth in trade and skills development. The area available for cultivation was explained when people learned to draw of the river water into man-made irrigation canals and dishes. Watering and fertilization larger and larger, and I see, I don't see the last part. Larger and larger, the last word. I don't know, ratios yes, of land. Yes, larger areas of land. I'm sorry, I can't, I don't know how to do yes. I can't. I can't get rid of that. So, according to this, Paragraph four, why was it easy for people to grow food near large rivers? A, because the flooding eroded the soil. The oh. soil was continuously enriched. Yes. Crops were crops were regular. The population was large enough. Letter B. Letter B, yep. Yeah, definitely yes. I would go for letter B. And according to that reading, why did early Neolithic build irrigation ditches? To increase the growing areas. It is the same, the same pattern. The same, the same, the same reading, yes. Man, I like A, B, and C. And D, too. So according to paragraph four, why did early Neolithic build irrigation ditches? Ditches. Let's see one, paragraph one. Paragraph four, let's see. What is the purpose of the ditches? Paragraph one. There's only two paragraphs here. <laughs> Okay, thus annually restoring the fruit, the fruitfulness of the land. The regular flooding and sediment deposit allowed these early farmers to continue cultivating the same fields repeatedly for generations without exhausting the fertility of the soil. The crop surpluses were, so there you go, surpluses. The last part, the last part, the To enlarge the first the last part the, 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 the areas behind the last part in the, the second area available for cultivation link. was expanded. People learn the last four lines okay. rows. The area available for cultivation was expanded when people learned to draw off the river water into the made man irrigation canals and ditches. ditches. Watering and fertilizing larger and larger land. Better than me. Yes. But does this and say available for cultivation was the span? But but listen, that's what happens. But look at the question. Why? Why the did early? Why did they build irrigation ditches? But what was the purpose to build? Yeah, what was the purpose? No, it doesn't say purpose. Yes, to enlarge. Yes, no, no, but listen to the question. According to paragraph four, why did early Neolithic build irrigation ditches? Okay, this is what the ditches do. But also look at this. So let's do here. Tigris Euphrates not only supplied water to the fields, but also brought down fresh soil in the form of fertile, muddy sediments. This sediment was deposited on, deposited on flood plains around such rivers 
thus annually restoring the fruitfulness of the land. This regular flooding and sediment deposit allowed these early farmers to continue cultivating the same fields repeatedly for generations without exhausting the fertility of the soil and crop surpluses were also hmm. But if you see where it says the area available for cultivation was expanded, when people learned to drop off the river water into man made irrigation canals and dishes. Yeah, so maybe it's B, right? Uh huh. Yeah, I hate tofu. <laughs> All right, we'll see. We only have. Okay, let's see this reading now. And I need a woman to do this. Rosa Maria, can you do that, please? Wait, you already read, correct? Okay. Both in Egypt and Mesopotamia, the periodic flood of great rivers such as the Nile and the Tigris. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, we did this already, correct? Sorry about that. I'm sorry, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Okay. The practice of artificial irrigation. Okay, hold on. Okay, this, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. The practice or artificial irrigation irrigation affect, affected the soil in various ways but not always for the good. Since the cha channels were often shallow, there was frequently a great loss of water through evaporation in a hot climate. This could lead to a marked increase in soil sal 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 salinity. salinity. Since the sal held in solution, solution or suspension were the Posted as the as the weather oh, yeah. evaporated, and too much sali salinity could eventually damage damage the soil. damage the soil. But overall, the effect of the irrigation system was to create an artificial environment and to some extend an artificial climate with a range of conditions that favorite but human experiment in agriculture develop beyond this city see how this settled is? settled Settle agriculture led to development of property rising in hence hence to a legal from framework and mechanisms. Mechanisms. Mechanis mechanism. Mechanisms. Mechanisms. To enforce law. This in turn led to a more extensive and hierarchical government organization in hands to development of large stable stable commun communities. Okay, so according to paragraph five, what negative effect did building of irrigation ditches create? A. Too much, Letter a. Too too much salt in the soil. Too much salt in the soil? Okay. And let's do the last reading. Ana Claudia Gonzalez, can you do that? Let's read the question first. Okay. So it says, it can be inferred that... Um, Se puede decir que... It can be inferred that short feature fills... No, 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 I'm sorry. Be before we do that, let's read Let's let's read what they want us to pay attention on. So the, the we're going to read a story, and it can be inferred that... Or it can be understood that the synchronization system... It can be okay. inferred, okay? 
So let me read first the the par the paragraph. No, yes, I understand, but remember what I told you. Oh, when you take okay. the exam, re read the question first so you know what you're looking for when you're reading it. Okay. You can pay more attention. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, 13. It can be inferred that most movie no, theaters... No, the reading. I'm sorry, the reading. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to start with history book the, the, for yes. reading? Yes, please. Okay. History books record that Record that the first moving picture with sound was the jazz sinker in 1927. But sound films or talkies did not suddenly appear after use of silent screening. From the earliest public performance in 1896, films were accompanied, accompanied? accompanied. accompanied by music and sound effects. These were produced by a single pianist. Pianist. Band, or a full scale orchestra. Large movie theater cooled by sound effects machines. Research into sound that was uh, reproduced at exactly the same time as the pictures called synchronized sound began soon after the very first movie were shown with synchronized sound characters on the movie screen could see and speak. As early as 1896, the newly embedded gramophone, which played a large, this carry music and dialogue, was used as a sound system. The biggest disadvantage was that the sound and picture could become unsynchronized. If, for example, the gramophone needed to jump or if the speed of the projector changed, this system was only effective for a single song or dialogue sequence. A later, a later development was the sound on film system. Here, sounds were recorded as a series of marks on celluloid read by, read by optical sensors. These uh, signals will be placed on the film alongside the images, guaranteeing synchronization. Short feature films were produced in this way as early as 19, 1922. This system eventually brought us talking pictures. Okay. I was thinking of Charlie Chaplin all this time. <laughs> Do you want me to read the question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It can be inferred that most movie theater had a pioneer. Sound effect machines were common. Orchestras couldn't synchronize sound with the pictures. Gramophones were developed about the same time as moving pictures. Do I need to read the 14? And no, no, no. What do you, okay. uh, class, what do you think is number 13? Letter A. Letter A or letter D? It can be inferred that most movie theaters had a pianist. Why did they have a pianist? Because it was the most accessible. Remember? Or because leather D. But gramophones were developed about the same time as the moving pictures. But remember, it says that gramophones were developed about the same time as moving pictures. So that means it... it's not because it's sound. But yes, it, mm -hmm. it was sound, talking yes. about it, it was obviously was later on. So what yes. it was trying to say that mostly because of cost, every theater yes. had a pianist. Okay, yes. But remember, it can be inferred. So yes. also D is correct. If you, It depends how you see it. Next, it can be understood that the synchronization system could be placed alongside the images developed at the same time as sounds for movies. Was important development for talking pictures. Was a guarantee that short feature films could be produced. See, was an important development for talking pictures. Yes. Yes, I would say C. 
It can be inferred that the short feature films produced as early as 1922 precede, preceded taking pictures, put musicians out of work, were recorded by early censors, were only effective for dialogue sequences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey. 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 Maybe we miss something. Oh, man. The answer is erased. <laughs> oh, we forgot what we put. Oh, the previous one? <laughs> hey, look. It can be inferred that short producers as early as 92 put musicians out of work. Um, well, maybe. <laughs> put musicians out of work. It can be understood that synchronization systems. Yeah, that one's. Movie theaters had a pianist. Okay. So we were right, except this one. Yeah, is A is not correct because proceed is after. So actually, no, feature films produced as early as they were recorded. But yeah, maybe musicians out of work. Hmm, interesting. So look at one thing here. It says, Welcome to the listening section. As in the reading section, here you will Welcome to the listening section. As in the reading section, here you will find challenges about listening, about the listening section, two types of listening questions. Listening Okay, so Tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to do a listening part. The challenges of listening, which is what we have been doing this week, the challenging to understand what we're, what we're listening about the listening section, two types of listening questions, and listening practice. This is what we'll be doing tomorrow. Okay. So no more reading. Now it's going to be listening. So if you thought reading was difficult, let's see, maybe listening is easier or more difficult. Who knows? We will see tomorrow. Okay. Okay, class. Then I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye, everyone.